How has third party funding changed over the last 20, 25 years? Well, the short answer is it didn't exist 25 years ago, apart from in the insolvency context. So two things have changed. One is there's been legal reform, which has allowed uh, funding and the rules on maintenance and champity have, have been watered down in, or, or abolished across a number of jurisdictions. Second thing that has changed is, is that the market has followed the money and we've seen increasing numbers of third party funders with insurance backgrounds, banking backgrounds and uh, funds backgrounds coming into the marketplace with increasingly sophisticated offerings. It used to be just consumer claims, now it's shareholder actions, uh, you see governments seeking third party funding. Uh, so it has really evolved and developed into being right at the forefront of modern legal practice. What marks out DLA Piper as being different when it comes to third party funding? One is we see more investigations and more disputes than just about any other firm out there. And as the market for third party funding increases and clients are seeking funding for their claims, we see more funded claims because we do more claims than most of our competitive firms. So we have more experience both of how to go and get funding for claims, but also we have more experience of the particular tactics that one needs to deploy, which are different from the mainstream when you're responding to a funded claim. The second thing that sets us apart is that we have broadly two kinds of clients, commercial clients and government clients. And we are seeing funding not just in the commercial world where corporates are interested in defraying legal costs because of pressure on legal budgets, but we're seeing governments seeking funded solutions to some of their intractable problems, particularly in emerging and developing markets. And it's a real game changer. It's fair to say that uh, third party funding is most certainly driving class actions, at least in the UK. The funders are relatively tight-lipped in terms of the, the cases they're funding. They want a good prospect of success and that means uh, the claim has got to have at least 50 to 60 percent uh, chance of success and ideally higher than that. The funder is looking to fund a good claim. It's not looking to fund an unmeritorious claim. But having said that, I think because of the huge amount of capital that's required to certify the class and to bring the action, I think there are claims that otherwise uh, would not have been brought. The, the law firms or the claims management companies would not have had the resource to bring them. And they're brought now because there is that funding uh, available uh, from the third party funders. But that doesn't mean that bad claims are being brought. It just means that more decent claims are being brought. Well, there's a number of criteria when you're looking at any case, regardless of whether it's a class action or something else, which you have to look at to decide whether a case is eligible for funding. But typically, class actions will tend to be larger. They will tend to have a larger group of claimants. And as a result, the economic viability of funding a class action is possibly more likely than a single claimant action. What's really important is, are the economics of the case viable? So we look very critically at the claim value, so what is each member of the class's claim worth, and then we look at what's the likely membership of that class, and then we look at what the budget will be. And just because it's a class action doesn't mean it's large, it may be only a relatively small number of people with relatively small claims, but crucially what we're looking at then is a uh, whether these types of cases are something which are of interest to us. And they can be anything from equal pay claims through to we're funding 15,000 Indonesian seaweed farmers in their claim against an oil company, all the way through to corporate shareholders who have a group action uh, in relation to perhaps a non-disclosure on the flotation of a company. It really can cover everything. If you're looking at trends at the moment, there are two very, very clear trends. Uh, one is data breach. The other area is uh, in the follow-on damages uh, claims in the competition space. Those are unusual because they are opt-out and, and therefore you don't have this huge amount of work to certify your class. So they are um, hugely attractive. There is another advantage from the funder's perspective because when you, when you pick the claim up, liability has already been established. So you've certified your class and all you are concerned about is the level of damage. So they are uh, really attractive. I think you would struggle to find a funder that doesn't want to fund a good claim in that space uh, and that is another area for, for huge potential growth. When courts are comparing the packages that are on offer from different funders, they are looking 
mostly at two things. The first one is what percentage of the potential payout the funder will take. The other thing they're looking at is what can a funder bring to the action. So funders that are very involved, funders that will in, uh, provide strategic input tend to be favoured. But litigation funding is now a class of assets, just like any other kind of investment. That's on the funder side. And of course, on the claimant side, it's another way of accessing justice.